We're going to go back to the original equation that we wrote for how far up or how far down an object was. And we're going to go back to the original equation, which was a sine function. So the value of x is equal to the amplitude x0 times the sine of omega t. And it's a perfect sine curve. We're now going to ask a very simple question, and that is, if I was to measure the gradient of this graph at any point, what would that gradient actually represent? Now, we know, we know from GCSE that if you have um, a displacement time graph of displacement, and then there's time there, and you had a graph that looked like that, if you measured the gradient of that, you would measure the change in your displacement divided by time, and that would be the velocity of the object. So the gradient is equal to the velocity. Well, the same is bound to be true here. The gradient of a displacement time graph is always going to be the velocity. The only difference between this and GCSE is that the rate at which x is changing um, keeps changing itself. So it's a little bit more complicated. But nevertheless, the idea that velocity is your change in displacement divided by time is a very basic one. Of course, you could argue that because the gradient is changing, you should take a small value of x and a small value of time. And you often represent that with deltas. But of course, at A level, we take that to an extreme. We take an infinitely small change in the displacement. And that corresponds to an infinitely small change in the time. And we say dx by dt. But effectively, it is finding a gradient. And of course, in A-level maths, that is called calculus and is called differentiation. So differentiation is really a gradient finding process. Well, on these graphs here, what we're going to do is ask, what is the gradient of this graph here at that point, that point, that point, and so on, and then plot those values on the graph below. And if we are successful, we should therefore have a velocity time graph plotted on the second set of axes. Now, it is clear straight away that there are some points in this graph where the gradient is zero. There, for example, if you stood on that point there, then you're not going to be sliding off the curve. So at that point there, the gradient is zero, and therefore I'm going to plot a zero on the graph below. Of course, the gradient is also zero there, so I could plot another zero gradient on the bottom axis, and of course there as well. The next thing we're going to do is look to see where the gradient is a maximum and also positive. And you can see that if you started there and went this way, it would get steeper and steeper and steeper. There is a maximum steepness, a maximum gradient, and then it gets less steep and so on. So at that point, you have a maximum positive gradient, and therefore I'm going to plot a maximum positive value for the velocity. Of course, there is also a maximum gradient, but the graph goes the other way. It goes negative, so I plot a maximum negative there. Here, it's a maximum positive, so I start here. If you then say, well, what graph have you got? Well, this is your graph. Maximum down to zero, maximum, and so on. And the graph that we get is a cosine curve. So you could argue that if you differentiate sine, you then turn it into a cosine curve. And in maths, you're taught that if you differentiate a uh, sine curve, then you get a cosine curve. Well, we can see that if it is a gradient finding process, then that makes sense. Of course, we could differentiate the velocity time graph as well. 
because as we know, um, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. A change in velocity divided by a change in time. So we could do a very similar argument and say that when you go from this graph to the differential of this graph, we should get the acceleration graph. Well, you can see, can't you, that the gradient is zero there. So we'll plot zero. The gradient is zero there. Plot zero. And the gradient is zero there as well. So we start off with a zero. When we get to there, though, we have a big gradient, but it's negative. So we plot a point there, big but negative. There, big but positive. And those are all the points we need. We can see the graph we get. It starts there and comes down to there and then there and so on. And you can see that it's not a sine curve as such. Well, it is a sine curve, but a negative version of one. So we could argue that that is a negative sign. And in A-level maths, if you're uh, asked what is the um, differential of um, a cosine curve, you're told it's a negative sine curve. And we can see why that is the case. Now, you may say, well, that's all very well. Sine changes to cosine, which changes to minus sine. So when I take this equation here and I rewrite the new equation there, I should end up with a cosine coming into it. And if I then differentiate that again, I should get a minus sign. But I don't want to start with the sign. We said in the last video that you often uh, take a pendulum and you move it to a maximum displacement. And then you let go and you start off with a cosine curve. Well, it's very easy to show what happens. All you do is you shift your vertical axis over until it's there. And you start timing when the particle has got a big displacement. And then you say, right, well, um, I can see that that is a cosine curve. So if I start with a cosine function, I then get to that one, which is a negative sign. And if I differentiate a negative sign, I then get a cosine, but a negative version of it. So that is how you differentiate cosines. Cosines to a negative sign to a negative cosine. In the exam questions, you'll get, they'll give you a graph. And it may be a displacement time graph. And then underneath, you'll be expected to do the velocity time graph and the acceleration time graph. That should be the sequence of graphs you're asked. In some of the older questions, you will be given a sine curve. And if you get a sine curve, you then go to a cosine and then to a negative sine. So those are the graphs which represent displacement, velocity and acceleration.